What's up, everyone? Welcome to The Takeover, brought to you by Tycoon TV. I'm your host, Danny Coleman, and I'm joined here tonight with my guys, Keelan Knight and Dwayne Spearman. Today, we have a heavy-hitting show. We're talking about Odell Beckham Jr. as a free agent and what teams might get a chance to pick him up. We are also talking about Deion Sanders leading Jackson State 11-0 for the first time ever and what his next move should be. Should he stay? Should he go? What's next? Then, finally, we're going to talk about NBA prospects. There's a lot to talk about, so let's jump right in. Hey, guys, what's up? Dwayne, Keelan? What's going on, my guys? How y'all been? Man, I'm doing good, man. Man, I'm doing good, man. Dina said we talking about Prime today. You see how I'm coming. So it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good show. I'm ready to get everything going, man. All right, well, before we talk about Deion Sanders, we have to talk about Odell Beckham Jr. He's now a free agent, and quite a few teams could really use his talent on their roster. But what teams have the best chance to pick him up before the season ends? Keelan, talk to me. The, it's a lot of teams out here uh, that can use Odell. It's a lot of them, but a team that makes great sense to me is the Minnesota Vikings, and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, a team that gets Odell now he needs to go to a, a contending team. You have one of the best offenses in the league right now with Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen. Uh, they got uh, Hawkinson in a trade uh, during the deadline. And you have one of the most dynamic running backs in Davin Cook. You get a guy like OBJ in that lineup, that same defensive coordinator is crazy because you don't know how to play that offense. That offense will turn to something special right now to amazing. And just like that, with the type of talent they will have bringing in Odell. So I feel like the Minnesota Vikings, Go out and get Odell because if y'all do that, y'all could be competing for a uh, Vince Lombardi show to come February. I like that pick. That's that's that was a curveball pick right there, Kid Boogie. But the team that I like is America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. And the reason why I like the Cowboys is personally the stage that he'll be on. He'll be on one of the biggest brands in the country. You know, everyone knows Dallas. Their fans are everywhere. Everyone knows Odell, so it fits perfect. And now when I look on the field, when I look at Dallas's roster, it's very lacking at the receiver position. I see C.D. Lamb is obviously the leading receiver, but the second leading receiver on the team is a tight end in Dalton Schultz. You know, I mean, Michael Gallup is still working his way back from an ACL injury, and Noah Brown, he's doing what he can. But I feel like OBJ can immediately be an impact player if he goes right over there. He'll be the second option. He'll get a lot of a lot of touches, a lot of receptions. It's a run first offense, but having OBJ over the top, taking off the top of the defense is another element this Dallas Cowboys defense, is, I mean, this offense can add and it would be perfect for them. OBJ to the Cowboys for me. That's That would be interesting to see. Well, I guess we'll, we'll keep an eye on it and we'll see what happens. But it's time to get into some SEC championship predictions. As the college football season has come to an end, who do you guys see winning between LSU and Georgia? Dwayne, talk to me. You know, they say in the SEC, it means more. And I can attest to that as I've been down to the South and football is life over there. But in this matchup, it seems like LSU is going to be outweighed. You know what I mean? They lost to Texas A&M. They gave up 273 rushing yards, which I'm really concerned about. I feel like Georgia can exploit that. Being a great rushing team, they are. And also... Over the top, they can take advantage with Brock Bowers and tight end Darnell Washington. I feel like LSU is just a little bit over their heads on this game. Georgia's going to win by a wide margin. I'm going with Georgia. 
Okay. I'm not, I'm not really mad at their prediction, Dwayne. You know, uh, we don't give them so many yards on the ground. You know, with Georgia being a run team, that has to be an area where they have to address. But I feel like if LSU is going to have any chance to win this game, quarterback Jaden Daniels has to be on his P's and Q's. And, I mean, he has to get on his P's and Q's early. If you look at the game they won over that winning streak they had, Jaden Daniels caught a groove early. Like, Georgia is a great team defensively. They're only giving up 12 touchdowns on the season, the least in college football. So you're playing a very great defense, uh, discipline, and very sound. So if I'm LSU, if I'm uh, Brian Kelly, I'm trying to come up with some type of game plan that could confuse Georgia. The most they've been confused all season to try to get my quarterback settled in that game early, and maybe, maybe they'll have a shot. And even if he does that, that still might not be enough, but they have to get quarterback Jaden Daniels going and get him going early. So that's my recipe for an upset for LSU. Well, don't go anywhere because when we come back, we finally get a chance to talk about Deion Sanders taking Jackson State 11-0 for their first time ever. I know Keelan is really excited to talk about prime time. So you guys come right back. The life that athletes encompass today is no joke. A 24-7 job that requires constant commitment, daily focus, and of course, a foundational team who back them on their journey toward success. And that's where we come in. The goal of Tycoon Sports Media Group is to help grow and elevate the sports industry, one athlete at a time via various media techniques. Tycoon Sports is a full service media agency that was designed to provide services to athletes, trainers, athletic programs, parents, and more looking to build the image and brand of each athlete and expand the marketability to better attract different companies and audiences. TSM wants to focus solely on unlocking the creative capacity of its athletes while elevating the brand we are helping them build. Welcome back to The Takeover. I'm your host, Danny Coleman, and I'm joined here by my guys, Keelan Knight and Dwayne Spearman. So let's jump right back in. Deion Sanders has taken great strides to bring attention to HBCU football. And in those strides, he's managed to bring Jackson State 11-0 for their first time ever. Such a big deal. But do you think he'll stay with Jackson State and continue to do the work and shed light on HBCU football? Or... Do you think it's time for him to move to a bigger program? Keelan, talk to me about it. First of all, before we even get into it, shout out to Prime, one of the best to do it at the corner position. I don't just what, just any jerseys that I get a certain ones, and Prime was one of those guys. So shout out to Prime. Me personally, I think Prime should stay. Well, I, well, I think he is going to stay for the next two to three years, and I'm going to tell you why. Before he even got into the coaching on the HBCU level, Prime was a big advocate for HBCU Spotlight. You know, he the one, like, he is the one that started the HBCU combine that's been going on for a couple of years now for guys that are in the HBCU level to get that spotlight. And I feel like if he stayed for the next two to three years, that'll be more than enough time for him to even add on to what he's already starting at Jackson State. You figure, you know, uh, already having one season, being 11 and 0, you figure two to three more years, maybe he gets two more undefeated seasons. Maybe he gets a another five-star recruit like a Travis Hunter or get multiple. So it's so much that could be done in the next two to three years that will make Dion an even hotter candidate at the time being once he leaves. And it makes his legacy at the HBCU level so much better. So I feel like he'll stay for at least the next two to three. And to piggyback off of that, the question of the day is, who is Sweat? It's prime, man. Like, I love the way Prime just handles business. I love the way he takes adversity and turns it into an opportunity. Um, he's doing a great job with these kids at Jackson State. I feel like he is going to stay there because this is this is really his mission, you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure he's have had job offers all across the country. Like you can see, Colorado, USF. But those aren't particularly the jobs that he might want, you know what I mean, or particularly fit what, what he wants at this, at this time. So I feel like he's really going to cultivate the, um, the culture build something here at Jackson State first, and then after when he's done, you know, he'll forever be legendary in that city. And this will be me more than any type of NFL or NCAA job he ever gets. We'll always remember what he did for Jackson State, Mississippi. Nice. I mean, honestly, I want him to stay 
on the HBCU circuit, whether he stays at Jackson, Jackson State or goes to another HBCU. I feel like bigger programs already get enough attention. I feel like they already get enough money. I think it'd be great if he just stayed within the HBCU pocket. Like he is Deion Sanders. He is a big deal. He'll always be a big deal. And I think that will continue to help in his push and movement for like people to pay attention and understand like these schools are not less qualified just because they're historically black. So for me personally, I hope he doesn't go to a bigger market. I hope he stays where he's at and I hope he keeps doing the work. But while we're here talking about college football, it is time for us to move on. So it looks like Hendon Hooker has torn his ACL and is now out for the season, unfortunately. But what does this mean for his NFL future career? Dwayne, talk to me. First off, I just want to send my condolences to Hendon. You know what I mean? He was having a great season with 10, 27 touchdowns, two interceptions, a Heisman candidate, you know, top two or three. And for him to just have a devastating injury like that, while all the momentum was going forward his way, I wish him the best and hope he bounces back. But as far as the future, what I'm looking at is his age is a question, you know? Like, not too many 25-year-olds are going to be having a short lease as such, you know? So immediately he will have to be an impact. I do think he will get drafted, though. Someone will take a shot because he does have good intangible. He has a really strong arm. Uh, I like what I would like to see more is him survey the field blur, you know, as a quarterback. Look, look more off his first option. As he was looking at Jalen Hyde, he's always open. But I would like to see that more from him. But I do think as a pro, Hennon Hennon does have a shot. You know what I mean? I would like to see at the end of the day which team he goes to and how it fits his skill set. Is it, is it a developmental project with him? Because he's so old that I don't think he's going to be a developmental developmental project. Excuse me. It's going to have to be, he's going to have to come in, work his way back from his injury, and then apply football straight to it. You know what I mean? He's going to have to produce exactly as soon as he's coming out of the draft. So I'm, I'm excited to see this, man, with Hendon. Yeah, those yeah, those are those are some valid points you made, especially with him being an older guy. And, and to piggyback off of that, with him being 24, uh, when the draft comes around, he'll be 25. I believe he turns 25 in January. So I feel like with him being a quarterback, him being drafted so late, I think that will work in his favor because if you look at his history, uh, he's been at Tennessee. He was at, uh, Virginia Tech. He's had the ups and he had the downs. So I feel like a lot of quarterbacks, you know, that'd be the, that's the thing with drafting younger guys. You don't know how they respond to adversity. You know, Hendon Hooker has showed that when he's at the bottom, he knows how to put in the work and he knows how to get, you know, get himself back to back up to the top. So I feel like as long as, you know, they give him the best treatment, which I feel like they will. Like we're not talking about just the average guy. We're talking about one of the top quarterbacks in the country at one point, a Heisman candidate, uh, one of the one of the, one of the most electrifying players we saw in college football this year. And they know he has a future. I feel like uh in this situation, the only thing that's that's bad in my eyes is that he will probably miss out on a lot of money, probably going from a first round pick. He could uh, probably slide to the third. You know, we never know with an ACL injury. So once he gets picked up and he, you know, gets, you know, gets the uh, offense or wherever he's going, I feel like he'll be, I feel like he'll be good in no time just because he's a mature kid. I agree. And I'm looking forward to see what happens with him. And I know it's all going to work out well, but it's time to take another short break to pay some bills here at Tycoon TV. And when we come back, we're going to talk about NBA prospects because there's so many. And I can't wait to see what you guys say about that. So stay tuned. We are back now with Humble Hustler, the innovative entrepreneurial leadership organization that's making a huge difference. Okay, we're back, and it's time to talk about NBA prospects. So the college basketball season is in full effect, 
And there are a lot of college stars who are probably going to do well in the draft. But who specifically should we keep on our radar? Keelan, who are you looking at? Talk to me. A guy right now, D, that we, that I, I just have to put out there and it's hard not to. I got some friends. Victor Wimbayama, one of the best prospects we've seen in a very long time. We're talking about a guy that's over seven foot. They can put the ball on the floor. They can score at any way, any way possible on the court. He can score at a at a great rate. Right now, he's averaging 23 points a game, nine rebounds, and three blocks. One thing I would love to see him do, I would love to see once he get in the NBA, you know, him get just a little bit more physical because I don't think he's going to survive being at that size, but that'll come over time. But as a prospect looking forward, like the potential is through the roof. And I can't wait to see, you know, to continue to watch him as the season goes on. And, uh, you know, and I think he's going to make a great NBA player in the near future. Yeah, a guy for me who personally isn't on Victor Love, I mean, who is? He's an alien, but <laughs> has been balling out his first five, six games of the season is Anthony Black from Arkansas, a freshman guard. Um, six foot seven point guard has great ball handling skills, great off the pick and roll, has really good instincts that I've seen so far. Also, with that six seven frame, he can be a great defender. You know what I mean? When he's going to guard one through three in the NBA, what I would have to nitpick at is his shooting, um, his three point shooting specifically. As a as a whole, he's shooting forty eight percent from the field, which is which is really good. You know what I mean? He's, he's good at finishing at the rim. And also, what I would have to nitpick at is can he have it every night? You know what I mean? Will, will, he, will he bring it every night? Because it does seem like he takes plays off every once in a while. So I want to see, I just want to see that motor keep going because it's very contagious for him. He, he had at the Maori Invitational 26, six points. I mean, 26 points, six rebounds, six assists. He was balling out and the team fed off that. I would love to see that throughout the season. As a freshman, it's hard to get up for each game, but I feel like he will learn that in this Arkansas club. Have a look out for him. They're really good and talented. Oh, yeah, he's a baller for sure. Putting up those type of numbers, he's a baller. But another guy I got for you, and a lot of people was high on this kid coming out of high school, Imani Bates. Now, I know a lot of people is probably wondering, like, what happened to Imani Bates? We all know he was at Memphis last year. He ended up transferring uh, to Eastern Michigan, and he ended up getting into some trouble in the offseason. But I feel like him going through that, now I know his mind is on strictly basketball right now so far averaging. 20 points a game, which is a lot for a college kid. Not too many guys are coming out of college averaging 20 a game, but a lot of people will say his level of competition. That's why I feel like if minor base will, you know, develop that, that level of confidence throughout the season. And I think he will get Eastern Michigan in the tournament. And if he can get two to three showcase games on that level, we will see, hey, this guy's a baller, 16. He's a, he's a walking bucket. I mean, like you go look at the tape, he can score any, any way possible, and his shot is nasty. It's nasty. So I like what the money base brings to the table, man. He's a sleeper. I think. I think probably by after all the workouts and after all after the season goes on, I think he can sneak his way into that lottery. As long as he keeps his nose clean off the field, great prospect. Great. Yeah, second guy that stood out to me so far this season is Virginia's guard Armand Franklin. He's a senior now, a little a little older. But to me, that doesn't hinder you. As older, you have a lot more experience. What I've noticed with him is last year, he shot 29% from the three. This year, he's shooting 42%. So that lets you know he's a hard worker. You know what I mean? And that's his main strength is shooting the ball. He's six foot four. He can get his shot off at any time. So Armand, frankly, keep hooping, my young brother. You've been doing great this year. Okay, okay. I I got another one for you. And this and he's high on a lot of people's board. Caleb. Lord from North Carolina. Now, when you think about him, I go back to last year, that performance he had in the tournament where he where he gave it to UCLA. He put Coach K, he sent Coach K, hey, bye-bye. Like, I understand what you've done for the game of college basketball, but it's my time. Caleb Young is a great prospect. You know, physical guard, 6'4". He can get to the hole. He can shoot. Uh, I just want to see him get just a little bit more consistent with his shot. But when he's on... He's one of the top prospects you will see in all the college basketball. So I'm going to be watching him highly throughout the season with North Carolina being such a, a, a talked about team. I know they just suffered their first loss, but I think they're going to make a run. So watch Caleb Love, man. He's going to be a very good prospect for the NBA in this upcoming draft, for sure. Caleb is definitely one of the top guards in the country. But a guy who 
last but not least, the guy who has caught my eye is he's the Kentucky transfer. He did not play a lot last year. His name is Bryce Hopkins. He's six seven. He's this year he's averaging 14 and 8 after not playing much last year. He wasn't able to crack into Kentucky's rotation last year. It's a lot of talent over there. I get it. But he's over at Providence with Ed Cooley. Ed Cooley, he develops guys, he makes them work hard. And I love what he brings to the table. Um at 6'7, Bryce is going to be able to guard multiple positions. What I've seen so far is he's shooting a nice percentage from three at 35%. And also he's able to put it on the floor and have a soft touch. And at 6'7, if you can do both of those things, you're hard to guard. Keep going, Bryce. That is all for today's episode of The Takeover. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let us know down in the comments where would you like to see Odell Beckham Jr. go next. Follow us on Tycoon Sports Media for the latest updates. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.